Well, thank you very much for welcoming me to this uh, amazing forum, which is full of positive news and amazing projects. And I hope I will not look for you like a grumpy European futurist, even if I'm not sure, but I will give only good news to you. Can we predict 2050? Yes, we can. Not only we can, but we must, because the only way to succeed to do it is to predict and try to avoid the dangers. Is it too far to predict? If we look at uh, 2050, it's only 28 years ago, uh, ahead of us. It's not a lot of time. If you look at where we were 28 years ago, it was 1994, at that moment it was easy to predict that the world will be wonderful. As it was just said before, it was the end of the Cold War, it was the beginning of an amazing era of internet, new technologies, um, peace, some people even predicted the, uh, end of, the end of history, and we could have predicted, and many people like me worked hard in order to succeed this. Unfortunately, we didn't have the best case scenario. We had almost the worst case scenario in which we are now. Pandemics, we could have been avoided. Climate change, we could have been avoided. New war in Europe, we could have been avoided. Famine, we could have been avoided. Bad use of internet, we could have been avoided. And I can go on and on on what the bad, bad things that happened. What can we say for uh, the next 28 years? We can say the same. We can say what could be the best scenario and what could be the worst scenario. The worst scenario is the most probable. And the worst scenario means not only what happened in the last 28 years, but much worse. The worst scenario could be uh, something like the end of mankind. A commit, we, could, we could commit global suicide in the next 28 years. It's the most probable scenario. It's not certain. We can avoid it. We still can have the best scenario for the future. What is the worst? What is going on? Here, in a place with an amazing future, with a lot of optimism, a lot of success, it's maybe difficult to uh, focus on the global dangers. Zoom back, look at what happened, look at the world. Climate change is going to a mess and a terrible situation. We may be not anymore in position to avoid an increase of four degrees of mankind of temperature, which would be a disaster. As we have seen in Pakistan last month, we can see a huge amount of floods and disaster. World population. We know that the world population is going to go from what it is to something like 10 billion, with uh, something like uh, three and a half in Africa. We, the consequence of that will be huge migrations. Where, from where, from where to where. Other consequences will be a very difficult way to manage the core issue of health and pandemics, the core issue of famine and hunger in the next years to come. The number of people going to have hunger and severe hunger will move from what it is today to 200 million more, minimum. Education. Education is a disaster as we speak in a lot of countries, if not in all countries, but when you add two billion people, and if you add the long-term consequences of a COVID, which has, get, which has taken out of school for two years, hundreds of millions of students, half of them will never come back to school, and two-thirds of the half being women, girls, that will not go back to school and that will get married very young, stay illiterate and will not be in position to help their children to have a better situation. I can go on and on on other consequences of what is going on. New technologies. It's clear that new technologies, and I'll come back to that on the positive 
potential scenario, but new technologies can be a disaster. It can break up, it can work. If it work, it can create a situation where mankind is totally manipulated by AI, by the potential uh, possibility of uh, neurosciences, biosciences, to uh, predict our behavior and orient, channel us to what the systems, whatever they are, want us to do. A kind of technological dictatorship is probable. If you add the fact that this technology is pushing us to go less to learning and more to entertainment, less to focus and more to uh, short-term uh, enjoyment, we'll see that it's very difficult to think about people being able to learn enough to prepare to these huge challenges. The destruction of education is certainly the worst potential dimension of a suicide of mankind, and I will add, of course, war. I can make the list of local wars which are potential. One is going on, which can lead to commit global suicide as we speak in Central and Eastern Europe. There are others in Iran, between China and Taiwan, between some African countries, and global is more than possible. Can we avoid that? The lessons of history are very, are very interesting. They tell us the best way to avoid a catastrophe is to do reforms before the catastrophe. But we learn from history that it never happened. We only do reforms after the catastrophe and not instead of catastrophe. And now it's clear that we can do reform before the catastrophe. We can have the best use of technologies to organize ed tech, to organize food, fertilizers, health, rule of law, uh, global uh, defense of human rights everywhere in the world. We can have global peace and global discussion. We can have a collective intelligence to build what is needed for mankind. It is still possible and what we have learned here today, and what we learn every day, demonstrate it. How to do it? I suggest two main behavior. One is a personal behavior of each of us, each of you. Think of two children. One is you, when you were 10 years old, and what you, when you had dreams about what you become. And think of, am I at the level of what I hope for myself. And the second child I would like you to think is your grandchild or grandchildren, if you have or if you will have. Think of a world in which they will live in 28 years and ask yourself, I am doing what I should for him or her to have a best life. And second is not only individual, but collectively. We must put together our collective intelligence to build what I call economy of life, which means to focus on the main sectors which are good for life, education, health, sustainable energy, sustainable food, and get rid of poisons which are embarrassing our life and created the danger of what we see. We can do it. It needs a global mobilization. I call, that, I call that Project 2050 for life. How to do it? It's very difficult. I propose that we try to launch a collective intelligence project where all students and engineers of the world and scientists will focus on some specific projects for that as we speak working collectively, transparently, with no patent, and put that on the table for the sake of mankind. It is impossible. It is the best reason to do it. Thank you very much.